our parliamentary studio. Thank you for being with us, uh, Johan. Well done, uh, because many people are saying that, that everyone involved here is, is, is a hero. It's been a very important case. Just, just give us some of the history and what's been involved in this. Sure. For more than 15 years, our clients in Kolobeni have been saying, look, we have a right to decide what our development path is. And given the treatment that they got and the disrespect they felt they received from the Australian company Mineral Commodities Limited and from the state, their, their election has been for development via ecotourism and agriculture. And they've been saying, no, we don't want mining imposed upon us. And yesterday's judgment says... That's a right that they have. They have a right to say no, which is, of course, a right to say yes on, on terms that they, they believe are acceptable or yes to other development paths such as agriculture and ecotourism. Mm. Uh, at one stage, uh, Richard Spur and, and the minister, Gwede Mantashe, uh, physically in, involved. So, so this has been emotional even for lawyers involved. It's... It's, it's very hard when, when your clients are being ignored to not, not get personally invested. Uh, and, and that's sort of the nature of, of our approach, that, that we fully support our clients. And, and it, it can get emotional because our clients have been ignored for so long. Gwede Mantashe is, is outlining government's concerns. We just heard some of them. Uh, one of them is that, that the wealth under the, the earth is a national asset, uh, that this is something that should be shared by all South Africans. Uh, it's not only for, for those communities. Your response? So uh, I listened to the minister's comments. I also, I'm not so sure it's a state's position. Cabinet uh, issued a statement welcoming the, the overlap between consent as required by the Interim Protection of Informal Rights to Land Act and the minerals legislation. But I think he, his, his comments aren't, aren't entirely accurate. Uh, communities have a right to say no, which is a right to say yes if, if the, the, a fair deal is offered to them and they're fully empowered South African citizens. They're going to make rational decisions. They're not going to, to shoot for the moon if, if, that's not, if that's not going to be to their benefit. And this is absolutely not a ban on mining because communities just now have a right to say yes on terms that are favorable to them and their development path. And all of any that may mean no mining, but in other communities, I'm sure, it, I'm sure that won't be an impediment to mining. It just means mining on fair terms for communities who have been disadvantaged by colonialism, apartheid, and now deserve their rights to be respected by a democratic government. Uh, Maybe he is right in, in terms of pushing up the cost. Uh, very important projects may be uh, not granted uh, by communities. He's saying it will kill mining in this country. I, I just don't see that that's likely. Communities are entitled to have a menu of options presented for their development. Very often, uh, if, if a mineral is so valuable, uh, they'll be able to have a fair deal presented to them, and, and then they'll say yes on, on terms that, that work for them. And that seems like an absolute minimum requirement uh, as we try to undo the injustices of the past. All right, so, so I'm sure this is going to be appealed. The, the legal process is not over yet. If you win uh, at the end, to the end, what are the implications? I mean, how many communities have been affected in the past uh, and, and likely to be affected in future? So first, the implications for our clients in Kolobeni are very clear that, that if we win, and, and I don't want to, to say for certain there will be a, an appeal. We, our clients have called upon the state to just respect their rights and not appeal. But if there is an appeal, our clients are confident of ultimate success, and this means that they have a choice to develop to, to make their own decisions regarding development. And that means for indigenous uh, communities, for communities who have been historically oppressed in South Africa, they also will have a choice to make their own development paths. And, and the judgment uh, is based also on international law and, and the African Charter on People's and Human's Rights. And this has implications for communities across Africa and their ability to make decisions regarding their own ancestral land. All right, a very big judgment after 15 years. Thank you very much. That was Johan Lorenzen, associate of uh, Richard Spur Attorneys, uh, obviously involved in that case on the side of the Nolobeni community.